When I was a kid, I was in special ed classes. School really wasn't for me. I was an average student who never really applied himself in school. Fast forward and a few years later, somehow I managed to become a doctor and not just any doctor, but actually a very good one. Hey, what's up? Dr. Ricky here. I am a double board certified plastic surgeon working out of beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. Like many of you going into college, I had no idea what I wanted to pursue studying when I got there. At first, I went to Syracuse University and I pursued a career in speech communications. My name is Jeff. That major was literally picked for me because I had no idea what I wanted to do. After two years and over 200 inches of snow each year, I transferred back home to the University of Georgia. Go dogs. Since I didn't have a career path planned out, I thought to myself, why don't I take some business classes? That way I can at least go back and work for my parents. My parents owned a computer company selling computers to medical practices back in the 1980s. It was unheard of then. Exclusive features like plain English commands. Then one day I was at the library studying for an economics exam and I literally had an epiphany pushback moment. As I was studying supply and demand curves, I thought to myself, I hate this stuff. However, since I'm a very science-minded person, I'd always thought to myself, medicine's pretty cool. I decided, let's go volunteer at a hospital and see if I like that. So the job that I got at that time was a patient transporter. So I was able to take patients from ultrasound back to their room, from their room to get their MRI. We're talking about this! I was just with patients all the time, communicating and talking to them. To my surprise, I actually loved it. What I really enjoyed was the relationship that I was making with patients and watching them get better over time. That's when I thought, man, I really enjoy this stuff. Maybe I could do something involved with science or healthcare. So I decided to test myself. Let me just sign up for a science class on the side while I'm taking all of my business classes and see how I do. And not only did I pass the class, but I got an A without even working that hard. I realized that it wasn't that I was a bad student. I just wasn't passionate about what I was studying before. After taking those two classes, I realized that I was up to the challenge and this was gonna be my path. I went home, frantically sat down at my desk and began to devise a whole plan of what it would take to finish all of my pre-med coursework. I will never forget this moment when I decided to drive home from Athens, Georgia to Atlanta and I laid out my entire plan to my mom. Mind you, I am a senior in college at the University of Georgia and I am 26 years old and I am about to graduate. Most people would think that I was a little too old to start my career in medicine. How do you do, fellow kids? Not for me. I was determined to make it happen. After telling my mom, it was time to tell my dad. So I told him, I said, Dad, I want to become a doctor. He reminded me that medical school was very competitive and that I would be up against students with really good grades and probably very good MCAT scores. Now I'm the kind of guy, the best way to get me to do something is to tell me that I can't do it. So I thought to myself, I'm gonna prove you wrong. When I started this journey, my overall GPA was a 2.6. After finishing all of my pre-med classes, my overall science GPA was a 3.8, which brought my overall average up to a 3.0. Now, I always say everyone has a story. So I use this transition of not making good grades to making good grades as part of my proof to the medical schools that I had changed and I was up to the task. I took the MCAT twice. I was either gonna become a doctor or become a doctor. I remember telling one of the interviewers at some point that I was just looking for someone to give me a break. While I was waiting to hear from medical schools, I got a job as an orderly at the hospital working in operating rooms. Yep, my job was mopping floors and wiping down OR tables between cases. From time to time, I got to kinda slide into one of the rooms and watch the surgeons operate. I found myself so intrigued by surgery and I was asking them questions all the time, trying not to annoy them. A few months had passed and all I was getting were rejection letters. I was waiting patiently for the one that was going to give me an interview. 
At that moment, I realized I was just like all the people that I would read about in these motivational books. I realized that if I wanted to become a doctor, I had to do everything in my power to make it happen. I looked for every school that I hadn't heard from yet and I started making phone calls to every admissions office I could. I explained to them how I wasn't the best student when I started school because I wasn't passionate about what I was studying. But ever since I discovered medicine as a career path for me, I worked tirelessly to increase my GPA and get the best MCAT score I could. So I'm down to the last school that I could possibly call, which was the Chicago Medical School. I remember this day so vividly. I make the phone call and now I know the girl on the other end of the phone's name was Danny. And she actually understood where I was coming from and she wanted to help me so bad. I was so eager for just a chance. And a few days later, I got a phone interview at the Chicago Medical School. A few days after that, I got a letter in the mail that offered me an in-person interview at the Chicago Medical School. Just as I expected, I was able to tell my story passionately and I feel like they heard me. On Cinco de Mayo 1997, I got a letter in the mail that I had finally been accepted to medical school. Here's the message behind my story. Don't let anyone tell you what you can and can't accomplish. You have to sometimes do the untraditional thing, take things into your own power and make it happen for yourself. When you want something bad enough, it is up to you to go and get it. No one's gonna make it happen for you. You have to make your dreams come true. You believe in you and if you believe in you, the chances are, you are going to get there. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Let me know in the comments below a time in your life when you faced adversity and how you overcame and accomplished your goal. For now, guys, Dr. Ricky, out.